Good to see you all here. Um, I think I'll start with, have you all, are you, anyone using Knative? Can we show the hand? Okay. Mm. <laughs> not, you're not using, but you have heard of Knative? Ah, okay. So, well, this is maintainer's track, so we would be talking about what Knative project has been up to, and we'll also talk a little bit about what Knative project is, and I'm on stage with my esteemed colleague here. I'm Naina Singh. I work for Red Hat. Uh, Paul Schweiger at IBM. Uh, Dave Pertusowski from VMware. Roland Hus from Red Hat. Yep. And Mauricio Salatino, or Salaboy, and I work for a company called Diagreen. OK, so let's start with what and why Knative. Uh, so the short answer is it makes Kubernetes simple. And the long answer is it is an open source platform that enables developers to create, build, deploy, and manage workload over Kubernetes through an abstraction layer. And it can do that in serverless fashion. It's just icing on cake. So now next question is how? So with Knative functions, well, let me start back. Uh, Knative comprises of independent components that all work together really well. So with Knative function, it lets you create a function in two steps and deploy it on your cloud or cluster. Um, with Knative serving, you, you can manage your applications that, uh, that can scale up and down based on demand. It also provides you traffic splitting. That means you can test some particular new feature uh, without disrupting your users. And with Knative eventing, it allows you to create declarative event-driven apps um, that can respond in real time. So to sum it up, Knative provides developers or could be a go-to tool choice for developers to create, build, manage workload of container-based applications. Um, so I gave a glimpse of what the independent components of Knative are, but here they are. They're serving, eventing, and client, and we have a CLI that ties it all together. And we are going to go a little bit more into what these components can do, but serving is, I call them that automagic HTTP services. Uh, you give us a container in one step, we give you the URL. Knative eventing is basically a whole gamut of tools, or infrastructure if you will, that allows you to create event-driven apps and Knative functions that lets you bring your own code. We provide the project scaffolding, the templates, and we even take off the building of the container off of your list and gives you the URL directly. Knative is built on the plugin architecture. So as you can see, what it means is that you don't need to do something specific for Knative. It can work with the stack you have and for serving, eventing, and functions, it is listing on the slide as to what technology it can work perfectly well with. And with that, I'll give it to my colleague to talk about serving. So serving, um, like you said, it's all the magic HTTP services. Um, basically, you know, if you're running an HTTP application on Kubernetes, there's a lot of things that you may not want to have to deal with uh, that Knative can kind of do for you. So it makes it easier to run. HTTP applications. Um, so for example, we can scale your application based on the number of the requests that are coming in. So you don't have to worry about how many replicas you want. We can, you know, based on how many, you can set a concurrency level, the number of requests that are coming in, we can scale it up to meet that demand. We can do that automatically. Um, if you want to do a rollout based on kind of a percentages of traffic, we have a capability to allow you to do that. So you can, you know, give a traffic percentage for the different rollouts that you have. Um, um, we take point-in-time snapshots of your application, so if you make changes and need to roll back, it's very easy to do that to exactly what it was. You don't have to worry about, you know, what did this Docker tag reference, that kind of thing. We do it, um, we make an exact copy of kind of the configuration and your code that you can roll back to as needed. Um, we add automatic health checks and automatic TLS provisioning, so a lot of kind of tools that you can use um, to make things easier. And the nice thing about this is you can go from, you know, there's a lot of YAML that's required kind of in deploying an application. You need a deployment, you need a service, you need an ingress. Um, with Knative, you can kind of cut out 
all these little pieces and you go from that behemoth on the, which whatever this side is, um, left, um, audience left, to what we have on audience right, uh, which is 10 lines, give or take a little bit. Um, so it makes it easy to deploy applications. Um, and with that, Dave. Hello. So some recent highlights is, um, this is stuff I've been kind of personally working on, trying to improve the stability, one of them being like, uh, not dropping requests during upgrades, and then we also have this activator component that is buffering um, when uh, your revision scaling up, but it can take some time for things to do that, so then you want to buffer those requests, and when that goes in between the data plane and comes out of the data plane, make sure we don't drop requests when that happens. Um, you also did some expansion for timeout, so um, if you're scaled to zero and then activation fails, then clearly you have, would like to have a timeout there. And also per revision uh, request timeouts was kind of important to add, especially for like WebSocket workloads. You would want to set the timeout to be very large and then also kind of set, uh, for example, like kind of like the idle timeout. Um, one outstanding bug we fixed recently was like with Cert Manager, there's a limitation on the domain length that you could do. So if you have really long namespace names <laughs> or really long uh, service names that is now fixed with sort of auto TLS. And something we've been focusing on um, is some security aspect stuff. So Security Guard is sort of like an extension that lets you apply some policies to requests that are coming in, aka like don't let, uh, reject certain headers, uh, don't allow certain query params, kind of allow the operator to apply certain policies that way. And we kind of also finally took, a, Change the default domain, we're using example.com everywhere. So when you do a deploy, it would actually expose your ingress on that domain, which doesn't exist. Um, but we decided to take a more secure by default stance and make it cluster local, then letting people expose the domains after the fact or letting the operator do that. And for the roadmap, um, there's a link there, but to highlight uh, internal encryption is sort of a thing we're working on now. The reason why is because there's um, PCI and NIST compliance. Um, is useful, you need to have like the data plane to be encrypted. Um, a big project that I want to work on, and it's been a while, we still use open census, but uh, open telemetry is hitting GA for a whole bunch of their specs and libraries, so we want to migrate to that. Um, Gateway API, so like Nina mentioned, we have like plugins for the different networking layers. You can switch from Istio to Contour, et cetera. Each of those requires essentially like a special plugin. We want to opt out of that and we just want to program the, the networking using the Gateway API directly. And with that, I'm spending time in the upstream community there, trying to write gaps, get positioning so that Knative use cases are heard. So if people use Knative and want to use the Gateway API, go look for uh, those gaps and comment, please. And finally, like just more scale and testing performance. The serving API has been stable for like two, three years, and I just want to do scaling tests and things like that and improve the performance because there's definitely some uh, things to do. So I'll hand it off. Yeah. So let's uh, then go to the second pillar of uh, Knative, which is Knative Eventing. And uh, Knative Eventing is all about for creating event-driven applications, which means you have get uh, primitives for building up an event mesh, and in the center of this is the broker, as you see their entity, so everything is reflected by CRDs behind the scenes, and of course there's a control plane, a data plane, who picks that up, and uh, actually there are two main concepts, so one of that of a source where you get pick up events. It's important to note that these events are in the format of cloud events, which is also another CNCF standard, so um, actually these sources that, that uh, create these cloud events are more like adapters that pick up so uh, events from the outside world, like an event from S3 bucket, if there is a file change, creates a cloud event and then sends it on to the broker inside. And uh, the sources are connected to the broker and the broker is responsible for dispatching all these events to interested listeners. So you have, um, can have a Knative service for that, of course, which has the big benefit that the service is not running. So it's scaled down to zero if there are no events. So it's a per perfect fit together so that if you use eventing with serving. You can, by the way, use serving and eventing completely separately, so there is no dependency between both of them. You can use either serving or eventing, or of course both, both which makes totally sense. Um, yeah, interesting is you have a flexible way how you can register your, your applications. 
uh, to the broker with so-called triggers. The trigger itself can have uh, filters where you just specify which type of events you want to listen for. And also interesting is that your service then can return another event as a response. So it's all, everything is HTTP driven here. So you get an HTTP request with a cloud event. Your service returns another event, which uh, uh, yeah, a cloud event. This is then ingested into the broker again and dispatched to the other one. So you can really build a very flexible mesh with that. And of course, it doesn't have to be a kind of service. You can use a regular deployment. So everything that has kind of a, we call it addressable, has a URL in the status, can be used as a target for such an, such an uh, event. Yeah, and then finally, there's one interesting part where we're currently working on or kind of reviving the effort. So it's about event discovery because we, uh, you need to know which kind of event types are available in your system. So every these sources creates events of a certain type. And this registry can be used for, for lookups and to, so that you can find out uh, how you, where you can register just on these events. So this is kind of in a nutshell what eventing is all about. Um, now let's move on the recent highlights and also the roadmap. So one of the things that, that has been landed in uh, Kinetic Eventing recently was multi-namespace API server sources. So I have to say that there are several sources that came out of the box with Knative. API server source is one of them. This is just a source which runs constantly and listens to the API server and uh, creates cloud events out of API events like that. And previously there was only as a single, uh, it would only be able to listen on events coming from a simple namespace. Now you can use a selector to select multiple namespaces and, and get that. So this is kind of a, a, a new thing. Um, another thing is the broker. I haven't mentioned really how the broker is implemented. You can, by default, there is a, very, a reference broker, so to say, which stores all the events in the data plane within the memory of a process. So it's only probably only suitable for development. But for more production ready, uh, systems. There are other backends like Kafka or RabbitMQ that you can can use and plug in. Also, get more more resilience features for your events. And for Kafka, there is also now a way to scale up your broker and also your Kafka source where you import Kafka uh, messages from a topic into the broker by Keda. So, who of you know Keda already? So, okay, some of them, that's, that's nice. Because Keda is also a very interesting project and actually we often get the question whether this is kind of competing with Knative, but actually Keda and Knative are really complementary. So, uh, Knative scales on HTTP based load and Keda scales on everything except HTTP. So, they, it scales based on number of messages in a queue, for example, and other stuff. And here we can use Keda really to scale our infrastructure data plane uh, so that it really the broker is only running if there are really also events in the system. So this is very, very nice for, for cost saving as well. And yeah, so these are the kind of the highlights. And then there's a roadmap. Uh, you find, by the way, all the roadmaps that we're showing here also on GitHub. So they are all stored in GitHub projects. Uh, you can follow those. So uh, we are now focusing on uh, production grade features like security, Canadian TLS support out of the box, which means uh, we can already kind of use uh, Istio and another service mesh for creating, for securing transport security. But uh, actually there is also the, the need for some native support for, for TLS. We're working on multi-tenancy support, which allows you to run multiple tenants that are separated uh, by each other for events. O OIDC, so integration with Istio is also a topic so that you can really nicely play together with a, with a service mesh. OIDC client auth support is, um, is used for to authenticate the sender to a broker because at the moment everybody can send to a broker, of course this is not optimal and th therefore we need some authentication uh, and authorization feature to understand that we can restrict the people who can send to a broker there. And finally, as I mentioned, event discovery is something which we also continue to work on to make it more flexible and, 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 and so on. So these are the roadmap of eventing. And now let's move on quickly to next one. So this is kind of a interlude, <laughs> so actually client. Uh, this is uh, maybe you don't know the, the client well. So the client actually is a CLI for Canadian like cube control. Of course, everything you can do with custom resources, but sometimes it's much easier to have some typed interface how you can interact with your cluster. And there KN is very helpful. So you have this kind of CRUD operation that you can use for services for brokers. You have a flexible plugin support which allows you to extend the functionality of KN. We will see functions in a second which leverage this uh, plugin support. Uh, one special thing which is uh, different from kube control plugins, actually it works nearly the same like kube control plugins, so the external command that you can, can run, they are found by a naming convention. 
but you can also inline them. So if they're written, if your plugins are written in Golang, you can also put them during the compiled process within one binary. And we have a builder system where you can select the plugins that you want to have. The benefit of this is this, that you only have a single binary where all your plugins are already included, and so you can easily distribute it. And recently, we have also now entries on Artifact Hub, which is kind of a way to discover plugins, and uh, you can install plugins either directly by downloading it from our website or using Brewer or some other installation mechanism. On the roadmap, there is one big thing, which is plugin context, context sharing, which means we want to allow that plugin can transport certain information to other plugins. So this is a very, a little bit um, complex to describe, but this is useful for for running your plugins and uh, yeah, so to, to make it more smoothly and make the user experience better. Then other user experience improvements are about event discovery, so the way how you find events, and also automatic trigger generation when you want to integrate functions so that you can combine them. And finally, secret management uh, is on the table and also improved export. We already know how to export Canadian services for GitOps-like operations, so you can interactively create your service with a CLI and then export it with a YAML file. Um, yeah, so there we, we are, and that's it so far for the client. And now let's go to... Functions. Let's talk a little bit about functions. So both clients and, and, and functions are CLIs, uh, but in functions we are focusing more on the developer lifecycle and we are focusing on that programming model of creating functions. How many here is, are like developers? Okay, yeah, okay. This, this kind of section is more on this client side, right? Like on how do you consume Knative? And functions are created in the, like with the, in the mindset for people that already has Knative, for example, serving and eventing installed in their clusters. It could be serving, it could be eventing, but now we are kind of like more on the client side. And what we're trying to create here is a simple flow where we are abstracting away a little bit about like that our functions are going to be running on Kubernetes. So this is for developers, also for platform builders that wants to provide like a functions as a service experience on top of Kubernetes. So with Knative functions, what you do is like you have the func KN plugin or the func CLI that you can use to basically create a function from a template. Uh, you can create that function from a template that can be uh, in any programming language. So we have templates for, for different languages. And as soon as you created the function, then you can just go and add the function logic in there, like the developer will go write the function logic. And then using func deploy, they can have that function running in a Kubernetes server with Knative. And of course, you will get the, you know, the, the URL back to interact with that function. It's pretty simple. It's based on templates. The idea here is to avoid developers thinking about exposing ports or creating a web server so people can access their functions. We are just wrapping all that logic up. And uh, it actually, we have different templates for dealing with HTTP requests or cloud events. So if you are building more like an event-driven system, you want your functions to consume cloud events, we have kind of like some templates more specialized on that. Uh, and the idea here is also like try to, again, go one step further into removing all the, you know, all the developer tasks like creating Docker files for creating containers for their functions and all that stuff we are trying to hide away behind uh, the func experience in general. So uh, when you want to build a function and deploy a function, the idea here is that the developer will focus on writing code and the func CLI will build the function container and it will also know how to deploy that function into the configured Kubernetes cluster. Uh, the function, this is just kind of like how a function, very very basic function template looks like. And again, you can, when you do func create a function, you can specify the language that you want to use. So are all these kind of like runtimes and text, you know, text stacks supported? So no, the Spring Boot, you know, Rust, TypeScript, Python, Quarkus, and Go, right? Like this is the Go one. And as you can see here, the function signature, it's pretty simple. In this case, it's one of these functions that it's expecting an event. And in this case, it's a cloud event. That's why you see the import there. So this function, uh, whenever we call this function, this function is going to actually get the cloud event, parse it, and have kind of like that event into a Go struct so the developer can do something with that event, right? And it can also return an event, as you can see there. So this is pretty simple. Um, so a little bit about like what we are doing. It's uh, like the functions uh, working group. It's pretty active in a way that we are like looking into not only how to improve the developer experience, but also our target users are platform engineers that are trying to build these platforms, like pick up like any functions and build an experience on top of it. So there is a lot of work around finding the right abstractions for platforms and making sure that we are not you know leaking anything from what is installed in the cluster into the developer experience. 
For that, we are working on something that it's like a new scaffolding mechanism on how do we create, you know, these function templates and what kind of capabilities do we enable developers to have out of the box and extend. So um, that's one part. Then pipelines as code, of course, that because we need to build these functions somewhere. If you try to build the functions locally, of course, um, for the thing that we have today, like the last release, uh, you need to, of course, have like, you know, Docker locally, so you can actually create a container. The user will not be interacting with Docker directly, but the func CLI will actually use the Docker daemon to build the container. Uh, but we also have different approaches. So we can, um, if you use, for example, we have something that it's called on cluster build that was created by Svinak here, um, that basically allows you to um, run Tekton pipelines in the cluster. So if you have Tekton installed in your Kubernetes cluster, what you can do is you can say, func deploy and the build step, it's going to happen remotely in a cluster, which makes a lot of sense again for platforms, right? Like when you want to say, okay, I don't want my developers to have Docker installed in their laptop, company policies, or maybe because they don't have access to a registry, like a public registry, or the credentials for that or whatever, you can just start using this remote builds kind of like approach. And then there is a project that is called Pipelines as Code, uh, which provides a more flexible way to define these pipelines that can be run remotely. So we are integrating with different technologies to do that. We are also looking uh, pretty active at creating WASM functions as well. Uh, that's not something that is supported in the latest release, but that's something that it, we are kind of like investigating and trying to include. And I'm uh, also working a little bit on the Dapper integration. I work for the Dapper project as well. So kind of like making sure that we make our functions like Dapper enable, which basically means that when you want to access to generic infrastructure, like storing data into a database or sending messages or like reading secrets and stuff like that, we go through this other abstraction layer. Again, from the functions perspective, that should be completely hidden away from the user. The user should have some kind of like the full functions and the function interface to, to interact with that. So what I wanted to show like in a quick demo today, I don't know how much time do I have. I have some minutes, okay. So uh, yeah, yeah, so I will finish quickly this. So what I wanted to show is like this new scaffolding mechanism that it's being created by Luke uh, from Red Hat. Uh, which is, again, like going through the investigation and the analysis of what are the lines, like the boundaries for function developers and, and what kind of things the platform should be providing, what kind of behaviors for our functions. So we are taking kind of like a different approach from the one that we have released uh, today. And this investigation is proven to be like very, um, you know, very eye-opening and, and mind-expanding. But yeah, I think that we are, we are actually uh, into the right track, so I will try to show some, something like that. It's, it's very difficult if you don't know the functions project, but I will just try to explain the, the logic behind the changes. Uh, with this new approach, um, with this new approach, we can actually um, run functions locally without the need, again, of Docker. Uh, if you want to create a local container for your function and run it using Docker, you can also do that. Uh, we are looking into what are the to define like more specifically what are the functions interfaces and what's being provided by the platform. And now we have kind of like this concept of instance-based functions, right? If you see kind of like this interface here, um, we will be creating kind of like, a, this is like a static method, right? Like on Go. So basically we, every time that uh, a function is being called, we are executing this method. But if you have like some initialization code or some shutdown code that you want to run, or for example, if you have like, if you need to add like to your functions liveness and readiness props that are a little bit more custom, you need to have uh, more control on that. And with our current approach, that's not that easy to achieve. So we are looking into expanding that. And of course, like the thing that I mentioned before from Dapper. So let's go to, to a short demo uh, that I will try to show here. I think that I can use this one. No? Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I think it's going to work. Yeah, perfect. So let's do this. Let me see if I can see my screen. Uh, I will go here to um, my VS Code, where I created a new, uh, new function that it's been scaffolded with the, new, with the new method that we are working on. So this is based on a branch. Can you see the function there? Yeah. So as you can see here, we have a, a little bit of a different um, um, function signature in this case. And as, as you can see, we are already part of a Go struct here. Like we're part of something. So this is kind of like a, a way to create like instance-based functions that they will have some kind of context that we can use. And because we are now part of a bigger scope, right? Like this is not a static handle method we can start doing uh, some other initialization code or, for example, readiness and liveness probes. We had uh, before, like the, the approach that we use with the static method approach is like we were wrapping our function code into, uh, you know, a web server 
uh, that was started with a, a bunch of default endpoints, like for example, default liveness and readiness props. But again, if you wanted to extend that base layer, that wasn't that, that easy. You need to provide your own base layer and, and that, that gets complicated. With this new approach, um, let me show you first how does this look from, from the terminal. Let's see here, let's clean the screen. Uh, let me see if I am in the right place. Yeah, so I'm inside my function. The function is pretty simple. It's a, just a Go project with a func.jml file that describes what the function is doing and the, the programming language and, and some other details. And as soon as I have this, I can actually do something like func deploy. And this is going to actually build a container. In this case, with this new approach, we are not even using a Docker daemon to build a container. We are using a library just that creates that. And by the end of this command, what we should have here is a, a URL for the function, right? So I, I, go, I went from having a function that it's written locally, and it was created by a template, uh, to deploy this into a Kubernetes cluster where Knative is, is enabled. So I can actually do HTTP, um, you know, on that URL, post that URL, just to make sure that it's, it's actually running on my cluster. And there you go. So we can like have the request received there. That's the most basic function that you can create, the, the, the function that comes out of the box from the template, right? But again, if you want to start customize, customizing the lifecycle of the function, what you can do is you can start enabling, for example, the, some of the lifecycle methods that we have here. Um, we have uh, like the readiness probes, so this is the function. And, and again, what I wanted to show here is that ready now, this function that is here, that it's part of my function struct, it's actually um, providing one of the lifecycle hooks that we provide, right? You know that when you deploy something into Kubernetes, you need to actually make sure that the cluster understands that this, uh, this container is ready and it's actually already working and, and ready to be used. The same with, you know, with the alive function here for the liveness probe, right? A more common use case as well is initializing code. Um, in the previous version, if you wanted to bootstrap or load some libraries or doing something before calling the function code, you need to do that for every call. But in this case, you have like a stat, you know, lifecycle method that you can extend and you can plug in and, and, and do that. So we are trying to expand again, like the function interface. Before we didn't have like a very strong interface. We only had like the function signature, but now the function uh, interface of the lifecycle methods that you have gives you more control uh, to do more more use cases, basically. This was one kind of, kind of, one of the major request. So if I do func deploy again, I don't know if I save the file, hopefully yes. But again, I will now should be able to see that the function, you know, has this custom liveness probe and readiness probe, which sounds like super simple, but again, when you are building real life applications, you will need to extend that based on the other services that are available, or databases or whatever that your function is consuming. So if I do logs the function, yeah, deployment, you can see that, yeah, okay. So it's now being, it's calling those custom endpoints in this case. And the same, kind of like for the started thing, that's where you do all the startup stuff. I will finish the demo with something pretty simple, and, and this is just something that we are evaluating. Um, as you can see, the function doesn't include any dependency here, which basically means that all the, all the, all the methods here, like start, ready, or alive, or whatever lifecycle thing that we want to expose in there, are part of the function signature. And that allows us to, for example, do some, some other stuff like adding methods for saving data or emitting events or reading secrets or even like communicating with the workflow engine and starting some you know, business processes and stuff like that. Uh, this kind of like signatures, basically, the idea here is just to have a clear signatures to execute certain behavior without pushing the platform uh, for a specific implementation on how do you actually implement that functionality. But in here, what we are doing is we are trying to give the developer the tools that they need, so they don't actually need to worry about you know, adding dependencies to a database or adding, you know, adding a dependency to a message broker and that kind of stuff, something that uh, the Knative Vending project is also doing. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, when we run a Knative function, uh, so I also want to show here um, functions, KSBCs, you can see, that's a Knative service. You can see that it's function on a U, like it's running on a URL. But if I list the pods as well here, the, well the function is not longer running. There you go. I will just call it so I can see it running. So yeah, as you can see here, uh, we have the Kennedy proxy running in there. But also right now, uh, the function project added that like Dapper integration. So you can see that it's injecting kind of like the Dapper side that gives you access to all these you know infrastructure methods to do extended stuff. So yeah, this is kind of like the experiment that we are working. If you're interested in this topic or if you're a platform builder thinking about providing a platform as a service experience, we would love to get your feedback. 
if you are a developer and want to help us to create more templates for more advanced use cases, that's more, more than welcome. And I think that that's pretty much it on my side. Yeah. There is there any, yeah, I think that we are done with that, right? Like questions? Five minutes for questions, actually. Yeah. We have a um, question here. Yeah. Are there any? Yeah. Yeah, actually, this is a very great talk. Uh, I like the, the updates. I, I do have a couple questions. So, um, actually, the first question regarding the Kennedy function. Yeah. Uh, I, you mentioned the one uh, upload the code and uh, underline the Kennedy function to build the image in the end yep. and to to run the function. Um, my question is, does that will impact, I mean, the performance and increase some latency? Have you guys considered um, directly to run some uh, the source code uh, in some biomental instance, which is may may uh, have the performance, which is maximum, just wondering the syncing here. And because the, in the middle layer, I know the underlying is running on ports, so the bidding image may be the one of the step, but in the future, have you guys considered to make it more straightforward, like directly to run source code and uh, make sure make the speed is pretty up? Yeah, yes. so because remember that we're running on Kubernetes and we're running on top of Kubernetes, right? So we need to create a container. I, th I think yeah. that we cannot scape that except for, for something like Wasm, right? We can use like run Wasi to yeah. create Wasm functions and then just deploy that. That's like under current investigation, and that will add another way of deploying functions. So Funk is really good because it actually, it's very plugable, so you can say build functions in this way, or deploy functions in this way, or run functions in this way. Go ahead. I'll just add mm -hmm. that if you are developing locally, mm -hmm. you don't need to create containers. You can actually, let's say for example, if you're using Node.js function, you can use the NPM JS and all that stuff to do your local testing. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, so that, that the developer experience on your local does not need to be in container. So we provide that local tools for every language that we are supporting. Got it. And the, the second question is, I, I do notice there's a couple patterns the Kinect provided, especially the function mm -hmm. um, and also serving and eventing. So if the user come to the Kinect sometime and they want to like solve in some like a website or or different using scenarios, which for the among these multiple patterns, is any recommended for users first to cho choose which one, which is can they most the fa fastest to adopt their use case, and uh, is any recommendation or just uh, depends on? Because I think it's mostly like going to serve, right? Usually we see people using serve anymore. Yeah, I think like the. What's interesting about Kinev is you can use different components independently. So like being at the booth, I heard uh, some people using eventing but not serving. Some people using serving but not eventing. Um, and interesting enough, like you could use functions just to build containers that um, and then deploy them somewhere else. Like you don't in using deployments and things like that. So I think there's a composability to all these components that like. Hopefully, like using them together is greater than just using them in individually. But I think the choice of what components you use will depend on the use case. So I can't really maybe answer that unless you have a specific use case. Is my guess. Got it. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Last question. Actually, sorry, I take too much time. <laughs> uh, I saw the Kenneth Tiff as kind of um, uh, kind of related to more like service. So, uh, but um, I know CNCF today doesn't have the service tag. Um, so I'm wondering, is there any plan, in, especially in the future roadmap? I mean, uh, do you have something around this area? Because I had a discussion yesterday with top TOC members and uh, I am trying to see whether there's a chance to building a tag for service specifically. Mm -hmm. Right now there's not, only I think there's lacking this tag. So just wondering, is any plan and any source here uh, on your roadmap in the future vision to better align with the CNCF stuff? Uh, I would say if you form a tag around this, then please include us. <laughs> <laughs> so that sounds great, actually, okay. to have a discussion. Because we kind of kind of fell into at least serving to the like the runtime tag, but there's so many runtimes and it's interesting. But like there's, 
it's nice to have, I think, like a use case focus tag in this type of environment. I don't know if anyone else has. Yeah. 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 Working. Yeah. yeah, let's know the tag. Yeah. I think we, we are out of time. Yeah. Got but, uh, but maybe, but if you have questions, sorry, that we uh, come, come to the front and. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, go outside. <laughs>